New York City is the center of the art world, the crest of the wave of art history as it is happening now, and it is so much more awesome than you think it is. Here are my top 10 favorites from the over 3,000 gallery exhibitions that occurred here last year. Oh, and if you've never been to a contemporary art gallery before, quickly. They're huge, they're free, they feel like museums, except the work in them is a thousand times newer, and the work is often not even for sale. The point of the exhibitions is to raise the fame, and therefore the value, of the entire body of the artist's work, all by inviting you to show up again for free. For example, in the fall, artist Phil Collins, not that Phil Collins, presented private soundproof record listening booths at the Tanya Bonakdar Gallery. The strange and always beautiful music was selected by you at random and written performed by various musicians inspired by free long distance telephone calls in a homeless shelter. Happening at the same time, only just across the street, at the Gladstone Gallery, artist Damien Ortega suspended twisted rebar from the ceiling, which was incredible in its own right and even more amazing when you noticed the shadows, forming the full alphabet in perfect cursive on the floor. But you want to talk about bending metal? Richard Serra filled both Galgosian locations on 21st Street, a massive rusted metal maze. A tight, twisting canyon lit by natural light whose narrow and curving passageways wonderfully disoriented you. And things got heavier at 24th Street, where massive blocks of steel weighing in excess of 50 tons each crushed your space as you walked towards the corners or lost you in a field of silent rhythm. And keeping spirits bright this winter was Yayoi Kusama with two infinity rooms at the David's Werner Gallery. The first over there, the massive completely mirrored room with color shifting inflatable tentacles, and the second there, which instantly became legend. Another mirrored room with a water flooded floor and what looked like billions of lights reaching forever. And if that wasn't awesome enough, only one person was allowed in at a time for 45 seconds of one-on-one -on -one infinity. Doug Wheeler, straight after, gave an even more insane taste of infinity at the David Zwerner Gallery on 20th Street. A massive room with completely curved corners and a light source from the floor gave your eyes literally no place to focus, no idea how far that wall was away, and therefore the experience of looking into the abyss of nothing forever. The most high-tech, crazy art I have ever seen, ever was Jordan Wolfson, who presented an animatronic stripper witch robot that danced to Lady Gaga and had facial recognition software, so she actually made eye contact with you when you were in the space. Crazy. Just the most top secret show of the year was through these doors. Located inside an abandoned Chase Bank, artist Urs Fischer dropped massive bronze sculptures that looked like wet clay and guided you through parts you've never been, behind the teller counter, into the manager's office, through the back, safe rooms open for free, and to anyone that knew the door was unlocked. At Metro Pictures, Robert Longo kicked everyone in the face with just a piece of black compressed charcoal. He reproduced with near pinpoint microscopic accuracy famous abstract expressionist paintings with just charcoal on white paper to scale. Every drip, smear, signature so real you'd swear the actual real thing was drained of color. Meanwhile, Oscar Murillo is actually a painter and one of the fastest rising stars in the market, but he didn't present a single painting at his first show in New York at the David Zwerner Gallery. Instead, he transported a functioning chocolate factory from Colombia into the gallery. You could watch the whole process, eat as many as you wanted, take home as many as you could carry, Amazing! The grand finale of last season was an index card. Artist Tara Donovan used millions of them to create these towers in the gallery. Her index cards were thicker and a slightly different size, but it is the material of her second sculpture that I found so intriguing that I went out and purchased some for myself. 
This is quarter inch clear acrylic square rod. And this is it in the hands of Tara Donovan. What appears like a fuzzy twinkling fiber optic cloud is in fact thousands of spikes, both dangerous and fragile. Oh, and just as a side note, Tara Donovan was in this group show called Grounded here a few months before that where she did this with pencils. Awesome. There are literally a hundred other exhibitions that were amazing and I just don't have time to talk about because next season is starting in two weeks and I'm gonna jump on that. But if you wanna stay on top of the most awesome things in the world as they're actually occurring, jump on to the2percent.com and subscribe to my newsletter. You'll also learn about these awesome hybrid live audio interactive tours that I give every single week. But no matter what, get out here. Okay, so there was so much awesome last year that I'm gonna to have to do four honorable mentions. Number one, not technically contemporary art, so I didn't include it in the top 10, but one of my favorites, Ad Reinhardt's black paintings at David Zwerner Gallery. I'm gonna to have to digitally recreate this because they're impossible to photograph. What appears like a black square when you first look at it, you let your eyes adjust for several minutes, and then uh, these colors start to pop out in this grid. And yes, Robert Longo, with just a piece of black compressed, recreated one of these in that Metro Pictures show. And we didn't even touch the Upper East Side. So at Gallery Parotine, Paolo Pivi presented a rainbow of feather-colored polar bears. And then downstairs, a sculpture that actually shot money at you. It shot money at you. Oh, and Cause, the graffiti artist who's famous for doing things like this and like this, went huge at the Mary Boone Gallery. And not technically an exhibition, but phenomenal if you are in the neighborhood, was the de-installation of that Richard Serra show. Um, here's the trucks moving it out on the street. I know what you're thinking. What about those Lee Hongbo sculptures that look like marble but were paper and then fanned out like an accordion? Or what about those 3D paintings by Patrick Hughes that looked like they moved as you walked by them but they actually didn't? Don't worry, I'm making a second video, the top 10 in the category of things that would actually fit into my apartment. That's coming in probably four to six weeks. Again, I do have to prepare for the upcoming season, but to make sure you don't miss that video, subscribe to the newsletter, www.the2percent.com. Sign up and you'll be the first to know, but seriously, I have to plan for September. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for watching.